So a couple of days ago I went to Stonehenge with my friend Robert and the idea was to shoot as much as possible Sunset, uh, Comet Neowise again, the Milky Way, possibly the Noctilucent Clouds and then Sunrise as well. And it was the first time in Stonehenge for the both of us uh, for photographic purposes. And we had plans that as soon as we got there we found that it needed to be changed. The space to shoot was only a narrow patch of land stretching along the main road and with 50, 60 other photographers there was really not enough space for all of us to maneuver. And also being on the main road, vlogging was really really hard for me. And so we finally arrived in Stonehenge, here in front of the historical site and all the cars that pass, which makes for quite a good, quite an unpleasant noise the whole time. I mean, it's the main road, what can you do? Anyway, here waiting for the sunset and then the Comet Neowise and then the Milky Way and all that can happen in one night. Hopefully not to do some class as well. We're gonna see about that, but here we are, ready to shoot. Also, with all the traffic, I couldn't really shoot any time-lapse or long exposure unless I decided to move to an even narrower patch of land, which was quite unsafe in my opinion at least in daylight. I mean, in the end, I still achieved a few shots I'm very happy with, so that's good. But during the whole night, we moved a lot to try and find different solutions. Now, I'm going to show you as a gallery of images from that night later in the video, as well as linking my previous video with the Comet Newwise over the London skyline. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is showing you my editing workflow to edit a Milky Way photo and really make the Milky Way core pop. Now, before we look at the photo we are going to edit today, I want to talk about getting the photo right in the first place, straight from the camera, which also saves time in the editing phase. Now, the very first important thing, and that is unavoidable, uh, unavoidable, unav unav unavoidable. The first important thing, and that is unavoidable, is trying to find a place that is as dark as possible. Now, despite many pictures that you see on Instagram, it is almost impossible to get a Milky Way shot in a city because there are way too many lights which cause light pollution and hide the very distant stars of the Milky Way. Even if you think that the place is dark enough, like a park somewhere in the suburbs, that may not be enough. Here I was far away from the city centre, in a very dark park, in absolute darkness, and yet you can see that the Milky Way is only a vague idea and leaves a lot to your imagination. But for the photo that we are going to see, there were no traffic lights and no cities for a few miles. And also that day it was new moon, which meant that there was no moon in the sky to cast its light. And even that can make quite a difference. Now if you want to find a place that is dark enough to shoot the stars, or the Milky Way, or the comet, here in UK there is a website called Dark Sky Discovery, but I'm sure there's something similar in your country as well. Or at least you can find some passionate astrophotographers that have put a page somewhere in the country where you are. And after you found a place, you need to make sure that your settings in camera allow the camera to suck as much light as possible. So you can see all the stars and the Milky Way. Now a very fast lens is ideal. f2.8, maybe even faster, that would be great. And normally a wide angle is the lens to use, to include as much Milky Way in the frame as possible. Now, depending on where you are compared to your subject, you can get away with a 35mm as well, but most of the times you need a much wider lens. And myself, I almost always use the Samyang 12mm f2, and I only use this for astrophotography, but it's incredibly good at that. Now, if I have enough people to subscribe to this channel and show interest in astrophotography, I will make a whole video about preparation and settings for astro. So go click the subscribe button if you want to see this happen. But now, let's dive into the editing. Okay, so now here we are in Lightroom Classic. And all the things I'm going to talk about will work in Capture One as well. So if you use that software, it's perfectly fine. You're going to have kind of the same settings to apply. And here is the Milky Way shot from the other night. I'm going to enter develop mode and start editing the picture. So now I'm in develop mode. The first thing I'm going to do is create 
a virtual copy of the image so I can have the original one as a reference. And I always like to work on a virtual copy because if I want to do something different on the original image, I can always go back to that one, create another virtual copy and experiment with it. And the good thing about virtual copies in Lightroom is that they don't take space in your hard drive. It's not that you create a separate file identical to the original one. It's only a copy that exists in Lightroom for you to make all the edits. Now, the first thing I like to do with my image upon importing it is try to match the shooting conditions as much as possible. So I'm going to apply the color profile that I used when shooting with my Fujifilm X-T4 and then the profile, the correct profile for the lens that I used, which was the Samyang 12mm f2. Now to change the color profile, you go up here in the basic adjustments panel, up where it says profile, and then select the correct one. Now, if you don't have camera profiles in Lightroom, you can always use the Adobe ones. And I would choose Adobe Vivid for this specific kind of image, for astrophotography image. But since I shot with a Fujifilm camera, I'm gonna use Astia Soft, which is always my preferred film simulation for astrophotography. So I'm gonna go here and then close the panel and scroll down to the lens correction panel. Make sure that remove chromatic aberration is ticked so you don't have any fringing uh, around the stars. And then enable the profile correction for the Samyang lens. So scroll down to Samyang and then select the Samyang 12mm. And already with these two simple adjustments, you can see the difference that they make. Now, normally, I would also start applying some input sharpening as well because RAW files are always softer than JPEGs by default. So I always go here and apply some sharpening to the image, but I'm not gonna do it now because this is a 64 ISO image at night and I don't want to introduce even more noise. So the only thing I'm gonna do here is apply some noise reduction. And I'm gonna start with uh, 25 as a default value for noise reduction and then if I need it I'm going to refine it later. Now talking about sharpening I have a whole article in my blog about sharpening Fujifilm RAW files properly because Lightroom is not exactly great at sharpening Fujifilm RAW files because uh, especially with some cameras like the XT series Lightroom doesn't really recognize the pattern of the sensor of this camera because they don't use a bias sensor. They use an X-Trans sensor, which is different. But I'm not gonna go into the technicalities today. If you want, I'm gonna link the blog article in the description below, so go check that. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna scroll back up to the basic adjustments and I'm gonna start making the highlights in this image really pop and probably turn everything a little bit bluer as well. So I shot at 3700 Kelvin, which is already a cold temperature, but I'm going to tune it down slightly, like to 3500, so it's slightly bluer. And then I'm going to increase the reds as well, not too much, to 20. And then I'm going to increase the clarity so that I can make the stars really shine. I'm going to do this as well with the brushes later, but I start to do it with the overall image already. A little bit of dehaze, just to counter the pollution in the air, and a little bit of vibrance as well, just for the blues. And then I'm going to apply a, a gentle S curve for contrast. So here I'm lifting the highlights and then I'm going to increase the contrast by taking down the shadows a little bit. Now I could adjust the curves for the different channels as well, maybe ever so slightly. this, I may 
increase the blue yeah, here. And then I also work on the color panel, just on the blues. So I'm gonna shift everything to a darker blue. So in the hue, I'm gonna move the light blue to a darker one, just slightly, and then reduce the saturation and darken it a little bit. So reduce the luminance as well. So back up to the basic adjustments. Now, highlights and shadows. I'm gonna increase the highlights and the shadows just a little bit. I'm gonna do it more later. And then the whites. Now you can really see that the core of the Milky Way is really evident now. And so it's time to start brushing. So for the brush, I'll go up here above the basic adjustments panel and then select the brush. I'm going to show you all I'm doing with the brush by ticking the show selected mask overlay down here to the left. And I'm going to select a brush that it's not too large because I need to paint in between the trees as well. So I'm going to reduce the brush size. Uh, a feather of 60 is fine, a flow of 30 is fine, so there's no hard edges on the brush. And uh, a density of 15 is fine. If I need to paint harder, I'm gonna just paint over and over the same spot. So I start here in the core of the Milky Way, and I'm gonna do a speed painting, so this video is not extremely long. And I start painting from here inside the core of the Milky Way. Okay, I hope you can see the mask with the video compression of YouTube. But it's all over the core of the Milky Way and the brightest stars. Now I'm gonna untick the show selected mask. And I start applying the settings here in the basic adjustments panel of the brush. I'm gonna increase the color, so I want the temperature to be warmer. And the overall Milky Way to be slightly more red, so I want more colors to really make it stand out against the blue of the sky. And I'm going to increase the exposure as well and the contrast. And pretty much everything, so the highlights the whites, the clarity. I can really push the clarity here, even to the maximum. And now with the latest versions of Lightroom, we have this new hue adjustment, so I can shift some of the colors here as well and move the blues towards something more orangey. And that's all I'm going to do with the brushes. Now, if you want to do some more refinements, you can always apply even more brushes. Just click a new one to create a new brush and then paint only in the areas where you want to add some other effects. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep just one brush and then go back to basic adjustments and make the final refinements. So I'm going to close the brush panel. And what I'm going to do now is start adding some gradients. So I'm going to add a linear gradient from the top, holding shift to make it straight. And increase the contrast and the blues just a little bit. 
and then maybe just slightly increasing the exposure as well. And then I'm going to create another one from the bottom to lift the shadows of the trees and the foreground. Now here, this is a feature that is not available in Lightroom CC, it's only in Lightroom Classic, but I'm gonna apply a range mask, so I'm only targeting the trees and, uh, and the foreground. Because there's a clear difference, this is gonna be very easy. I'm gonna show you the mask here. And I'm gonna change the range so it only targets the really dark areas of the image and not the sky. And I'm going to increase, actually decrease the shadows. I'm going to increase the value on the slider. So I want some detail back from the foreground. And then maybe some sharpening as well so that I sharpen the leaves. So these are the two linear gradients. I'm gonna apply a radial gradient as well into the core of the Milky Way. Just for the sake of adding some more color. Again, I'm gonna use the range mask, but this time I'm gonna target only the highlights. So I'm going to reduce the range. And then increase the feather as well and change the temperature. So a bit more yellowish and a bit more red. And then close the gradient panel and there we have it now we can spend hours tweaking the settings for the milky way and for any astrophotography i'm gonna keep it short so let's compare the before and after here i'm going to go back to gallery view and select the original one and then the visual copy and so here we have the two images together that's the original one to the left and then what we just did with the editing here to the right and this is how you make the Milky Way really pop in your images. Now, like I said, this can be refined and edited even further than this. But I hope this video inspired you to start editing your astrophotography images and take them to another level. And so that's it for the editing. Now I'm going to show you a few more images from the night out in Stonehenge. And if you like this video, hit the like button. Consider subscribing as well, because this would really, really help this new channel. And hit the notification button so you know whenever I post new videos like this one. But now, I'll leave you to the images, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!